question, should a sports announcer's mistaken use of the N-word cost him his job? A longtime baseball announcer for the Oakland A's was let go after he used the N-word on air, which he says was unintentional. During a pregame show in Kansas City, Glenn Kuyper, longtime baseball announcer for the Oakland A's, was talking to colleague Dallas Braden about their trip to the Negro League's baseball museum, which is in that city. But Kuyper mispronounced the word Negro and instead used the slur. We had a phenomenal day today. <laughs> League Museum and Arthur Bryant's barbecue. Oh. At the time, neither Kaper nor Braden offered any reaction. Before the sixth inning, Kuyper told his audience this. A little bit earlier in the show, I said something didn't come out quite the way I wanted it to. Um, and I just wanted to apologize if, if, it, uh, if it sounded different than I meant it. He was then suspended by NBC Sports California and ultimately fired. The network said in a statement, quote, following an internal review, the decision has been made for NBC Sports California to end its relationship with Glenn Kuyper effective immediately. We thank Glenn for his dedication to Bay Area baseball over the years. A person familiar with the investigation told the Associated Press that the decision was based on a, quote, variety of factors, including information uncovered in that internal review. We invited Glenn Kuyper to come on this program today, but he declined our offer. In a written statement, he called the slur an unfortunate mispronunciation. On that day, I chose to spend my personal time by educating myself and learning more about MLB's history by going to the Negro League Museum. I spent nearly three hours there in an effort to better understand and more deeply appreciate the difficulties and social barriers African-American players endured in MLB's early years. When the subject of the museum visit came up in the pregame show, I was excited and eager to share what I had done and seen that day. In my excitement, I rushed through the word Negro, resulting in my very unfortunate mispronunciation. I sincerely apologize to everyone who was hurt by this. It was a terrible but honest mispronunciation. I take full responsibility. He added, please know that racism is in no way a part of me. It never has been. It never will be. I wish the Oakland A's and NBC Sports would have taken into consideration my 20-year career, my solid reputation, integrity, and character. But in this current environment, traits like integrity and character are no longer considered. Then the president of the museum, Bob Kendrick, created a bit of a ruckus when he tweeted out a statement saying, my heart is one of forgiveness and that he hoped others would find it in themselves to do the same. I recently spoke with Bob Kendrick to ask him about that. Mr. Kendrick, what struck me when I watched the tape is he said he'd had a phenomenal day. Obviously, it was in praise of the museum, right? It, it was. I had met, I had met Glenn and his broadcast partner, Dallas Braden, here at the museum. We had had a wonderful time. I'm telling stories as I traditionally do, and particularly Satchel Page stories because of Satchel's connection to the A's franchise, of course, here as a member of the Kansas City A's in 1965, when he was reportedly 59 years old, and he pitches three shutout innings against the Boston Red Sox, giving up one hit to a young Carl Yastrzemski, which was absolutely amazing. So we're having a great time telling all of these stories, and and he had let me know that we're going to go eat barbecue and then head over to the, the ballpark and get ready for the game. What do you make of critics who say, the word was just too accessible, too much on the tip of his tongue. I understand what they're saying. And, and yes, it does sometimes maybe make one believe that is a word that maybe have been used before. I don't know for certain. So I understand that point of view. But again, that doesn't mean that it was deliberate. It doesn't mean that in this case, I felt that there was malicious intent. It was an awful thing to say. We acknowledge it as such. We don't condone what the use of the, the word was, but I certainly believe that it was a mistake. And, and I've been criticized because I felt like it was a mistake. I was going to ask about exactly that. What has been the reaction to your forgiveness? <laughs> well, number one, one would never think so much hate would come along with forgiveness. Uh, that, again, as I've said before, that seems a little bit counterintuitive, but I, I understand to some degree the emotional anguish that something like this can generate. 
is a horrible slur to have have happened. So I understand that. Now, was I surprised by how much vitriol had come my way? Absolutely. But again, that is the nature, particularly of social media. I hope the silver lining is a boost in your attendance. Candidly, I didn't know the museum was in Kansas City. I'm not going to come back to Kansas City without stopping in for a visit, and I hope that others do likewise. Well, I hope so, too, because, Michael, we had just announced our plans to build a brand new 30,000 square foot standalone Negro Leagues Baseball Museum just a few days before this happened. So I was riding a tremendous high, man. You know, this notion of building a new museum, even though it's going to cost us about $25 million to build it. And I've gotten a lot of congratulations on having to raise $25 million in order to do this. But I understand people are excited and we were excited. And then this happens and you find yourself kind of embroiled in something that was really not your own doing. But again, it comes with the territory. And I do think a lot of people have learned about the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum. And I hope we continue to see a lot of people who will make their way here. But as we record this, the Washington Nationals are walking through this museum right now. And it never gets old. Awesome. I always enjoy seeing young athletes come here.